The Assyrian genocide, also known as Sefo or Sefo, sword, Syriac, Qutlam Swari or Sipe, refers to the mass slaughter of the Assyrian population of the Ottoman Empire and those in neighboring Persia by Ottoman troops during the First World War. In conjunction with the Armenian and Greek genocides, the Assyrian civilian population of Upper Mesopotamia, the Tur Abdin region, the Hakkari, Van, and Syrt provinces of present day southeastern Turkey, and the Ermia region of northwestern Iran was forcibly relocated and massacred by the Ottoman Turkish army, together with other armed and allied Muslim people peoples, including Kurds, Chechens and Circassians, between 1914 and 1920, with further attacks on unarmed fleeing civilians conducted by local Arab militias, the Assyrian genocide took place in the same context as the Armenian and Greek genocides. Since the Assyrian genocide took place within the context of the much more widespread Armenian genocide, scholarship treating it as a separate event is scarce, with the exceptions of the works of Joseph Yacoub, Gabriele Yonan, David Gaunt and Hannibal Travis, who have classified the genocide as a systematic campaign by the Young Turk government. Other scholars, such as Hilmar Kaiser, Donald Bloxham and Tainer Akkam have differing opinions with regards to the extent of governmental involvement and systematic nature of the genocide, as part of the genocide denial movement, asserting a less systematic policy and different treatment in comparison to the Armenians. Unlike the Armenians, there were no orders to deport Assyrians. The attacks against them were not of standardized nature and incorporated various methods of massacre. In some cities, all Assyrian men were slain and the others were forced to flee. These massacres were often carried out upon the initiatives of local politicians and Kurdish tribes. Exposure, disease, and starvation during the flight of Assyrians increased the death toll, and women were subjected to widespread sexual abuse in some areas. Estimates on the overall death toll have varied. Providing detailed statistics of the various estimates of the church's population after the genocide, David Gaunt accepts the figure of 275,000 deaths as reported by the Assyrian delegation at the Treaty of Lausanne and ventures that the death toll would be around 300,000 because of uncounted Assyrian inhabited areas. Rudolf Rummel gives the number of Christian deaths in Assyrian populated regions of Turkey as 102,000 and adds to this the killing of around 47,000 Assyrians in Persia. In 2007, the International Association of Genocide Scholars IAGS reached a consensus that the "...Ottoman campaign against Christian minorities of the empire between 1914 and 1923 constituted a genocide against Armenians, Assyrians, and Pontian and Anatolian Greeks." The IAGS referred to the work of Gaunt and Travis in passing this resolution. Gregory Stanton, the president of the IAGS in 2007-2008 and the founder of Genocide Watch, endorsed the "...repudiation by the world's leading genocide scholars of the Turkish government's 90-year denial of the Ottoman Empire's genocides against its Christian populations, including Assyrians, Greeks, and Armenians." Terminology <inaudible> <inaudible> The Assyrian genocide is sometimes also referred to as Sefo or Sefo in English language sources, based on the modern Assyrian Mesopotamian Neo Aramaic designation Sefa, sword, pronounced as Sefo, and as Sefo in the Western dialect, the term abbreviates Shado de Sefo, Year of the Sword. The Assyrian name Ketla di Ama Atareya, Qutal Dm Tuari, which literally means killing of the Assyrian people, is used by some groups to describe these events. The word Qutalamo Qutlam, which means genocide is also used in Assyrian diaspora media. The term used in Turkish media is Suryani Soykarimi. In countries where significant Assyrian diaspora communities exist, the designation Assyrian has become controversial, notably in Germany and Sweden. Alternative terms such as Assyriska, Syrianska, Kaldiska folkmordet, Assyrian, Syriac, Chaldean genocide, are employed. Nestorians, Syrians, Syriacs, and Chaldeans were names imposed by Western missionaries such as the Catholics and Protestants on the Ottoman and Persian Assyrians. The Greek, Persian, and Arab rulers of occupied Assyria, as well as Chaldean and Syriac Orthodox patriarchs, priests, and monks, and Armenian, British, and French laypeople, called them all Assyrians. <laughs> Background The Assyrian population in the Ottoman Empire numbered about 1 million at the turn of the 20th century and was largely concentrated in what is now Iran, Iraq and Turkey. 
However, researchers such as David Gaunt have noted that the Assyrian population was around 600,000 prior to World War I. There were also hundreds of thousands of Maronite Christians in Lebanon, with some Assyrian heritage but which are less often called Assyrians. There were significantly larger communities located in the regions near Lake Ermia in Persia, Lake Van specifically the Hikari region and Mesopotamia, as well as the eastern Ottoman vilayets of Diyarbakir, Erzurum and Bitlis. Like other Christians residing in the empire, they were treated as second-class citizens and denied public positions of power. Violence directed against them prior to the First World War was not new. Many Assyrians were subjected to Kurdish brigandage and even outright massacre and forced conversion to Islam, as was the case of the Assyrians of Hikari during the massacres of Badr Khan in the 1840s and the massacres of Diyarbakir during the 1895–96 Hamidian massacres. The Hamidia received assurances from the Ottoman Sultan that they could kill Assyrians and Armenians with impunity, and were particularly active in Urhoi and Diyarbakir. Outbreak of war The Ottoman Empire began massacring Assyrians in the 19th century, a time of friendly relations between the Ottomans and the British, who were defending the Ottomans from the Russian Empire's efforts to include under its protection the communities of Ottoman Orthodox Christians. In October 1914, the Ottoman Empire began deporting and massacring Assyrians and Armenians in Van. After attacking Russian cities and declaring war on Britain and France, the Empire declared a holy war on Christians. The German Kaiser and the German ambassador to the Ottoman Empire directed and orchestrated the Holy War, and financed the Ottomans' war against the Russian Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Responsibility of the Ottoman government The degree of the responsibility of the Ottoman government and whether the genocide had a systematic nature has been the subject of different scholarly opinions. Concerning the responsibility of the Ottoman government, Hilmar Kaiser wrote that Talat Pasha ordered the deportations of the Assyrians in the area on 26 October 1914, fearing their collaboration with the advancing Russian troops, but the order was postponed and abandoned three days later due to a lack of forces. When the Assyrians did not collaborate with Russians, any plans to deport them were cancelled. Kaiser wrote that the massacres of Assyrians were apparently not a part of the official Ottoman policy and that the Assyrians were ordered to be treated differently from the Armenians. Tainer Akkam, a leading specialist in the Armenian genocide, cites Ottoman official correspondence in 1919, inquiring the number and conditions of Assyrians deported, to state that the Ottoman government was unaware of the full numerical extent of the deportations of Assyrians. Another Ottoman document orders Assyrians to be detained in their present locations, instead of their deportation, which, according to Akkam, indicates that the Assyrian population could have been treated differently from the Armenians, but that they were often eliminated. Alongside them, Donald Bloxham, a genocide scholar, stated that while Assyrians of Western Persia, Hikari, Bitlis, Van and Diyarbakir were massacred along with Armenians, they were "...not subject to the same systematic destruction." Dominic J. Schaller and Jürgen Zimmerer wrote that due to the lack of an international diaspora and a nation-state, the Assyrian were perceived as more vulnerable and less threatening by the Young Turks, which led to their extermination being "...less systematic." Massacres of Assyrians were often undertaken through the initiatives of local officials and groups. Nevertheless, they classified the campaign against Assyrians as having genocidal quality. Ernst II, Prince of Hohenlohe Langenberg, the German special envoy in Constantinople, sent a report describing systematic extermination of the Christian population of the Diyarbakir province by Reshid Bey, the governor. Martin Tamke wrote that a German chargé d'affaires in Constantinople sent to the German Chancellery an article from a young Turk-controlled newspaper, which mentioned the expulsion of Assyrians in the East as an example of the "...cleansing of the empire of Christian elements." Tamke wrote that documents such as these, along with oral traditions, are evidence of a systematic policy of extermination. David Gaunt compared the attacks on Assyrians in Hikari and Diyarbakir, and wrote that while the former was mainly perpetrated upon the orders of the Turkish government, the latter was a local initiative of cup politicians unconnected with the central government, and with no orders to exterminate Assyrians in the area. Massacres <laughs> <laughs> General characteristics 
According to historian David Gaunt, a primary characteristic was the total targeting of the Assyrian population, including farming villages as well as rebelling mountain tribes. The killing in rural regions was more extensive, while some survived the massacres in cities. Gaunt states that this indicates that a primary aim was the confiscation of land. The property, villages, and animals of the villagers were destroyed totally to prevent their return. Gaunt states that organized troops were tasked with killing and expelling Assyrians in Hikari and Ottoman controlled parts of Persia, as well as resisting villages. There were also deportations of Assyrians. Gaunt wrote that there was no standardized way of killing. He cites accounts of killings at town halls, river rafts, tunnels, streets, and during the flight of the victims. The methods included stabbing, decapitation, drowning, shooting and stoning among others according to eyewitness accounts cited by Gaunt. These accounts also record local officers having collections of body parts, such as ears, noses and female body parts. Percy Sykes, a British officer in Persia, wrote that the Assyrians would have been exterminated if they had not fled to Persia. However, starvation, disease and fatigue cost the lives of 65,000 more Assyrians on their way to Persia or once they had arrived there, according to Christoph Baumer. <laughs> Diyarbakir The earliest programs of extermination took place in the southern province of Diyarbakir, under the leadership of Reshid Bey. A German vice consul reported in July 1915 that Assyrians were being massacred in Diyarbakir Vilayet. A German consul reported in September 1915 that the adult Christians of Diyarbakir, Harput, Mardin, and Varanshahir had been targeted, and also mentioned an Ottoman reign of terror in Urhoi. According to the reports, the Assyrian population of Faish Khabar was completely killed, along with all the male Assyrians of Mardin and Syart. The widows and orphans of these men were reportedly left to flee to Mosul on foot, and died on their way due to starvation and harsh conditions. These atrocities prompted the Assyrian Patriarch to appeal to the Russian representative in the Caucasus, claiming that the Turkish leaders were intent on killing all Assyrians. The German ambassador reported that the Ottoman Empire was being clear ed of its indigenous Christians by eliminate ion. In July 1915, he confirmed that the Assyrians of Midyat, Nisibis, and Jazeera were also slain. According to the Syrian Patriarchate, the Turkish government ordered an attack on the Christian villages near Mardin, which were mostly inhabited by Assyrians. The soldiers went beyond attacking property and killed civilians, for instance, the Assyrians of Kizitepe, Tel Arman were gathered in a church and burned. In Diyarbakir, women and children were deported, but only a very small number reached their destinations as women were killed, raped, or sold. Individual accounts of the massacres include several villages. In the village of Cherung near Diyarbakir, 114 men were killed and the women and children were put to forced agricultural labor and given the choice to convert or die. The massacre was committed by an Al Khamsan death squad, which were recruited by the government and led by officials, while composed of local urban Muslims. In the village of Hainuye, about 400 Assyrians are believed to have been murdered. In Hassana, a village near Jezire, the 300 inhabitants were massacred, with some managing to survive and flee. The inhabitants of the village of Kavalkar were attacked by Kurdish tribes on 19 June 1915 and killed, their bodies were then thrown into the Tigris River. In Kafarb, two kilometers from the Mor Gabriel Monastery, 200 Assyrians were attacked by a clan of Kurds and murdered in 1917. However, there were also cases when those in power chose to protect the Assyrians, as Rakid Osman, the Aga of Cernak, protected the 300 to 500 inhabitants of Harbel. In their book The Treatment of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire, Viscount Bryce and Arnold Toynbee included a letter from the Presbyterian American Church in Ermia, sent on 6 March 1916, which related information from a survivor of the events described. In the document, it is written that nearly all of the 30,000 Assyrians called Nestorians of the Botan region had been massacred by the Kurds and Turkish soldiers with the orders of the government. While some Kurdish leaders tried to protect the population, they were unable to as the order had allegedly come from the government and such friendly acts were punished. All Christian villages of the plain were reportedly wiped out, including three Protestant villages. In Mansouria, one of these villages, Assyrian women reportedly jumped into the Tigris River to prevent their capture by the Kurds. 
The surviving women and children were taken as captives. Figures by the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate presented to the peace conference after the war state that 77,963 Assyrians were killed in 278 villages of the Diyarbakir province. Jean Nayem writes that about 50 villages close to Midyat were ruined and their Assyrian inhabitants slaughtered, but he does not name any of them nor give any casualty figures. However, the figure agrees with the data of the Patriarchate. Van In October 1914, 71 Assyrian men of Yuxekova, Gaur were arrested and taken to the local government center in Baskel and killed. In November 1914, Russian troops briefly occupied the towns of Baskel and Saray. Following their retreat, the Assyrian and Armenian populations of these areas were accused of collaboration and targeted for revenge. According to eyewitness accounts collected by Russians and local observers, at least 12 villages were wiped out. In this period, Jevdet Pasha, the governor of Van, is reported to have held a meeting in February 1915 at which he said, We have cleansed the Armenians and Syriac Christian s from Azerbaijan, and we will do the same in Van. In late 1915, Jevdet Bey, military governor of Van Vilayet, upon entering Syrt or Sirt with 8,000 soldiers whom he himself called the Butcher's Battalion, Turkish, Kesap Taburu, ordered the massacre of almost 20,000 Assyrian civilians in at least 30 villages, the same, Butcher Battalions, killed all the male Assyrian and Armenian population of Bitlis. They reportedly raped the women, and subsequently sold them or gave them as, gifts. The town of Sart, Sirt, modern-day Sirt, was populated by Assyrians and Armenians. Sirt was the seat of a Chaldean archbishop Adai Shur who was murdered by the Kurds. The eyewitness Hyacinth Simon wrote that 4,000 Christians died in Sirt. According to Joseph Nayem, who was an Assyrian priest, the number of Assyrians killed in the town of Sirt, Sirt alone exceeded 8,000. Eyewitness accounts state that the Assyrian men were rounded up by criminal gangs and forced to a march to the valley of Zeryabi, where they were killed. This was followed by the gang's attack on women. The Ottoman officer Rafael de Nagalas described a slope crowned by thousands of half-nude and still bleeding corpses, lying in heaps. He then wrote that when he entered Syart, he saw that the police and the locals were sacking Christian homes, and learned that the governors of the town directed the massacre, which had been arranged beforehand, according to the Blue Book. Of the American government, widespread ethnic cleansing and massacres occurred against the Assyrians as well as Armenians in the Hikari area, with the orders for the deportations of Armenians being misinterpreted as orders against all Christians by the local Kurds. It was reported that an attack was launched on Assyrian dwellings in summer 1915, and that Assyrians were attempted to be starved out. According to Paul Shimon and Arnold J. Toynbee, an Assyrian village called Goele with the population of 300, was attacked and its men were killed, while the women and children were forced into slavery and the houses were pillaged. In another village with 50 houses, the Kurds reportedly killed the entire civilian population. The Blue Book states that in one district of Hikari, only 17 Christian survivors were left from 41 villages. In April 1915, after a number of failed Kurdish attempts, Ottoman troops invaded Gaur, a region of Hikari, and massacred the entire population. There were later reports of the mass killing of hundreds of Assyrians in the same area, and women being forced into sexual slavery. David Gaunt wrote that the Assyrians of the Hikari area were targeted in a full ethnic cleansing, and asserted that they faced the full wrath of the Ottoman government as well as the local Kurdish tribes. He claimed that due to their consistent contact and collaboration with the Russians, they were targeted with atrocities, and after a battle in which they collaborated with the Russians to defeat the Ottoman army, the army perpetrated the massacres against Christians in Baskel, Syart and Bitlis described above. Talat Pasha also allegedly ordered a policy in which Ottoman troops, with the support of Kurdish tribes, defeated Assyrians and drove them to the mountains, subsequently destroying their property. Topic. Assyrian resistance in Tur Abdin Prior to the start of World War I, the village of Gulgos had about 200 families, and all were ethnic Assyrians that belonged to the Syriac Orthodox Church. During the Assyrian genocide, tens of thousands of refugees from throughout Tur Abdin arrived here for safety. 
At one point, the number of Assyrians in the village was up to 21,980 people. Refugees arrived from villages including Habasnos, Midyat, Boat, Keferts, Kafro Iloito, Maziza, and Ernas. Even refugees from outside Tur Abdin arrived, coming from villages such as Deklath, Bashiriye, Gozarto, Hesno di Kifo, and Myferkin. Being aware of the Turks and Kurds were coming to Gulgos, the Assyrian villagers and refugees created a militia to defend themselves, which was led by Masud Mirza, the son of Amelik. Their resistance lasted 60 days, and ended in success. At the same time, the Kurdish authority of Midyat was given orders to attack Gulgos and Arnas. However, Aziz Aga, the leader of the Midyat area, told them that they didn't have enough soldiers to attack both areas, and therefore they would attack Gulgos only, and then go to Arnas later on. Therefore, the Kurds of Tur Abdin and Rahman, under the generalship of Ahmed Aga and Salem Aga, collected themselves in Mardin, and created a unit of 13,000 men. The government authorized the distribution of arms, and they headed towards Gulgos, arriving late at night to begin the siege. After hours of gun battle, the Assyrians defeated the Kurds and drove them out, but there were many casualties on both sides regardless. After ten days, the Kurds attacked again only to be beaten yet again, as they lost well over 300 men. Before the beginning of a third attempt, Kurdish leaders called for aid from the mayors of Diyarbakir Rashid and Mardin Badri. However, a third attempt also failed and after 30 days of battle, Aziz Aga suggested a peace treaty between the two sides. Three Assyrians met with Aziz to discuss a peace treaty, but the Assyrians refused to lay down their weapons, thus the battle continued. The siege continued for another 30 days leading to many deaths on both sides. In the end, the Kurdish soldiers surrendered and left the Assyrians of Tur Abdin alone, hence why the Tur Abdin region is the only Christian populated area left in Turkey outside of Istanbul. The total death toll of this 60-day siege is unknown, but there were at least 1,000 deaths with both sides' losses combined. Assyrian resistance in Upper Mesopotamia On March 3, 1918, the Ottoman army led by Kurdish soldiers assassinated one of the most important Assyrian leaders at the time. This resulted in the retaliation of the Assyrians. Malik Yosef Koshaba of the Bit Tiari tribe led a successful attack against the Ottomans. Assyrian forces in the region also attacked the Kurdish fortress of Simko Shakak, the leader who had assassinated Mar Shimon 19 Benjamin. They successfully stormed it, defeating the Kurds, however, Simko escaped and fled. Assyrians were involved in a number of clashes in Turkey with Ottoman forces, including Kurds and Circassians loyal to the empire. When armed and in sufficient numbers they were able to defend themselves successfully. However, they were often cut off in small pockets, vastly outnumbered and surrounded, and unarmed villagers made easy targets for Ottoman and Kurdish forces. <laughs> <laughs> Events in Persia The Assyrians in Persia armed themselves under the command of General Aga Petros, who had been approached by the Allies to help fight the Ottomans. They put up a resistance, and Aga Petros' volunteer army had quite a few successes over the Ottoman forces and their Kurdish allies, notably at Suldos where 1,500 Assyrian horsemen overcame the far larger Ottoman force of over 8,000, commanded by Kari Bey. Aga Petros also defeated the Ottoman Turks in a major engagement at Saj Bulak and drove them back to Rwandas. Assyrian forces in Persia were greatly affected by the withdrawal of Russia from the war and the collapse of Armenian armed resistance in the region. They were left cut off, with no supplies, vastly outnumbered and surrounded. Ermia and surroundings The Ottoman Empire invaded northwestern Persia in 1914. Before the end of 1914, Turkish and Kurdish troops had successfully entered the villages in and around Ermia. On February 21, 1915 the Turkish army in Ermia seized 61 leading Assyrians from the French missions as hostages, demanding large ransoms. The mission had enough money to convince the Ottomans to let 20 of the men go. However, on February 22 the remaining 41 were executed, having their heads cut off at the stairs of the Sharbash Gate. The dead included Bishop Mar Denka. Most of the Assyrian villages were unarmed. The only protection they had was when the Russian army finally took control of the area, years after the presence of the Ottoman army had been removed. 
On February 25, 1915, Ottoman troops stormed their way into the villages of Gulpashan and Salamas. Almost the entire village of Gulpashan, of a population of 2,500, were massacred. In Salmas, about 750 Armenian and Assyrian refugees were protected by Iranian civilians in the village. The commander of the Ottoman division stormed the houses despite the fact that Persians lived in them, and roped all the men together in large groups and forced them to march in the fields between Kusrawa and Haftivan, Hafdawan. The men were shot or killed in other ways. The protection of Christians by local Persian civilians is also confirmed in the 1915 British report. Many Muslims tried to save their Christian neighbors and offered them shelter in their houses, but the Turkish authorities were implacable. According to American official accounts, the largest Assyrian village in the Ermia region was overrun and all its men killed, while the women were attacked. In Haftivan, the Russian troops later discovered more than 700 corpses, and the Washington Post also claimed the abduction of 500 Assyrian girls. According to similar reports, 200 Assyrians were killed by burning in a church. During the winter of 1915, 4,000 Assyrians died from disease, hunger, and exposure, and about 1,000 were killed in the villages of Ermia. According to Los Angeles Times, in Ermia alone, 800 Assyrians were massacred and 2,000 died from disease. American documents report widespread sexual violence against Assyrian women of all ages and the looting and destruction of the houses of about five-sixths of the Assyrian population. Reports state that over 200 girls were forced into sexual slavery and conversion into Islam. Eugene Grisel from the Ethnological Society of Paris gives the figure of 8,500 for the number of deaths in the Ermia region. According to other reports, out of an Assyrian population of 30,000, one fifth was killed, their villages and churches destroyed. An English priest in the area estimates the death toll at 6,000. However, David Gaunt wrote that the massacres were reciprocated by the Assyrians. Assyrian Gilu tribes were accused of committing massacres of local villagers in the plains of Salmas. Local Iranian officials reported that between Khoi and Julfa, a great number of villagers were massacred. In 1918, the Assyrian population of Ermia was nearly wiped out 1,000 killed in the French and American mission buildings, 200 surrounding villages destroyed, and thousands perished of famine, disease, and forced marches. In early 1918, many Assyrians started to flee present day Turkey. Mar Shimon Benyamin had arranged for some 3,500 Assyrians to reside in the district of Khoi. Not long after settling in, Kurdish troops of the Ottoman army massacred the population almost entirely. One of the few that survived was Reverend John Ashu. After escaping, he stated, You have undoubtedly heard of the Assyrian massacre of Khoi, but I am certain you do not know the details. These Assyrians were assembled into one caravansary, and shot to death by guns and revolvers. Blood literally flowed in little streams, and the entire open space within the caravansary became a pool of crimson liquid. The place was too small to hold all the living victims waiting for execution. They were brought in groups, and each new group was compelled to stand over the heap of the still bleeding bodies and shot to death. The fearful place became literally a human slaughterhouse, receiving its speechless victims, in groups of ten and twenty at a time, for execution. At the same time, the Assyrians, who were residing in the suburb of the city, were brought together and driven into the spacious courtyard of a house. The Assyrian refugees were kept under guard for eight days, without anything to eat. At last they were removed from their place of confinement and taken to a spot prepared for their brutal killing. These helpless Assyrians marched like lambs to their slaughter, and they opened not their mouth, save by sayings, Lord, into thy hands we commit our spirits. The executioners began by cutting first the fingers of their victims, joint by joint, till the two hands were entirely amputated. Then they were stretched on the ground, after the manner of the animals that are slain in the fast, but these with their faces turned upward, and their heads resting upon the stones or blocks of wood then their throats were half cut, so as to prolong their torture of dying, and while struggling in the agony of death, the victims were kicked and clubbed by heavy poles the murderers carried many of them, while still laboring under the pain of death, were thrown into ditches and buried before their souls had expired, the young men and the able-bodied men were separated from among the very young and the old. They were taken some distance from the city and used as targets by the shooters. They all fell, a few not mortally wounded. One of the leaders went to the heaps of the fallen and shouted aloud, swearing by the names of Islam's prophets that those who had not received mortal wounds should rise and depart, as they would not be harmed any more. 
A few, thus deceived, stood up, but only to fall this time killed by another volley from the guns of the murderers. Some of the younger and good looking women, together with a few little girls of attractive appearance, pleaded to be killed. Against their will were forced into Islam's harems. Others were subjected to such fiendish insults that I cannot possibly describe. Death, however, came to their rescue and saved them from the vile passions of the demons. The death toll of Assyrians totaled 2,770 men, women and children. <inaudible> Bakwaba camps By mid-1918, the British army had convinced the Ottomans to let them have access to about 30,000 Assyrians from various parts of Persia. The British decided to relocate all 30,000 from Persia to Bakwaba, northern Iraq, in the hope that this would prevent further massacres. Many others had already left for northern Iraq after the Russian withdrawal and collapse of Armenian lines. The transferring took just 25 days, but at least 7,000 of them had died during the trip. Some died of exposure, hunger or disease, other civilians fell prey to attacks from armed bands of Kurds and Arabs. At Bakwaba, Assyrians were forced to defend themselves from further Arab and Kurdish raids, which they were able to do successfully. A memorandum from American Presbyterian missionaries at Ermia during the Great War 16 to British Minister Sir Percy Cox had this to say. Capt. Gracie doubtless talked rather big in the hopes of putting heart into the Assyrians and holding up this front against the Turks, consequently, we have met all the orders issued by the late Dr. Shedd which have been presented to us and a very large number of Assyrian refugees are being maintained at Bakwaba, chiefly at HMG's expense. In 1920, the British decided to close down the Bakwaba camps. The majority of Assyrians of the camp decided to go back to the Hakari Mountains, while the rest were dispersed throughout Iraq, where there was already an Assyrian community. However, they would again be targeted there in the 1933 Simul massacre. <laughs> <laughs> Death toll Scholars have summarized events as follows, specific massacres included 25,000 Assyrians in Midyat, 21,000 in Yizira ibn Omar, 7,000 in Nisibis, 7,000 in Urfa, 7,000 in the Qudshanis region, 6,000 in Mardin, 5,000 in Diyarbakir, 4,000 in Adana, 4,000 in Brahimi, and 3,500 in Harput. In its December 4, 1922, memorandum, the Asiro Chaldean National Council stated that the total death toll was unknown. It estimated that about 275,000 Asiro Chaldeans died between 1914 and 1918. The population of the Assyrians of the Ottoman Empire and Persia was about 600,000 before the genocide, and was reduced by 275,000, with very few survivors in 1930s Turkey or Iran. Contemporary newspapers reported death tolls of 200,000 to 250,000. Representatives from the Anglican Church in the region claimed that about half of the Assyrian population perished. The Memorandum of the Assyrian Archbishopric of Syria Damascus to the 1920 Peace Conference places the death toll at 90,313 people, with 345 villages burned and 156 churches destroyed. The Archbishop demanded £250,000 sterling of reparations to compensate for the destruction of the churches. The figures of the Archbishopric places the death toll in Harput at 3,500, in Midyat at 25,830, in Diyarbakir and surroundings at 5,679, in Jezira at 7,510, in Nusaybin at 7,000, in Mardin at 5,815, in Bitlis at 850, in Urfa at 340, and tens of thousands at other areas. The Archbishopric states that the Ottoman government undertook massacres of Assyrian civilians with no revolutionary tendencies in the provinces of Diyarbakir, Urfa, Van, Harput and Bitlis, regarding the number of Nestorians, which refers to the Assyrian population, killed in Persia and Azerbaijan between 1915 and 1918. R. J. Rummel used Toynbee's and other contemporary reports to calculate a figure of deaths between 46,800 and 47,200. He calculated a death toll of 102,000 Christians in the Assyrian populated regions of Turkey, but these numbers also included the Armenians and Greeks. Assyrians were not subject to genocidal policies to the extent of the Armenians. However, in some provinces, particularly Diyarbakir and Mardin, the Assyrian population was devastated. 
In other provinces the population was left relatively intact. Topic. Documented accounts of the genocide Assyrians in what is now Turkey primarily lived in the provinces of Hakkari, Cernic, and Mardin. These areas also had a sizable Kurdish population. The following newspaper articles documented the Assyrian genocide as it occurred. Assyrians burned in church. The Sun, Lowell, Massachusetts, 1915. Assyrians massacred in Ermia. The San Antonio Light, San Antonio, Texas, 1915. Assyrians massacred in Ermia. The Salt Lake Tribune, 1915. Chaldean victims of the Turks. The Times, the 22nd of November 1919, p. 11. Christian massacres in Ermia. The Argus, Australia, 1915. Extermination of the Armenian race. The Manchester Guardian, 1915. Many Assyrian perish. The Winnipeg Free Press, 1915. Massacred by Kurds, Christians unable to flee from Ermia put to death. The Washington Post, the 14th of March 1915, p. 10. Massacres of Nestorians in Ermia. The New York Times, 1915. Massacres kept up. The Washington Post, the 26th of March 1915, p. 1. Native Christians massacred, frightful atrocities in Persia. The Los Angeles Times, the 2nd of April 1915, p. I. 1. Nestorian Christians flee Ermia. The New York Times, 1915. Syrian tells of atrocities. The Los Angeles Times, December 15, 1918, at I-1. The Assyrian Massacres. The Manchester Guardian, Dec. 5, 1918, at 4. The Suffering Serbs and Armenians. The Manchester Guardian, 1915, p. 5. Turkish Horrors in Persia. The New York Times, the 11th of October 1915. Turks kill Christians in Assyria. Muscatine Journal, Muscatine, Iowa, 1915. Turkish troops massacring Assyrians. The Newark Advocate, 1915. Turkish horrors in Persia. The New York Times, 1915. The total of Armenian and Syrian dead. Current History, a monthly magazine of the New York Times, November 1916, 337-38 Hannibal Travis, Assistant Professor of Law at Florida International University, wrote in the peer-reviewed journal Genocide Studies and Prevention, an international journal that Numerous articles in the American press documented the genocide of Assyrians by the Turks and their Kurdish allies. By 1918, the Los Angeles Times carried the story of a Syrian, or most likely an Assyrian, merchant from Ermia who stated that his city was completely wiped out, the inhabitants massacred. 200 surrounding villages ravaged, 200,000 of his people dead, and hundreds of thousands of more starving to death in exile from their agricultural lands. In an article entitled, Native Christians Massacred, the Associated Press correspondent reported that in the vicinity of Ermia, Turkish regular troops and Kurds are persecuting and massacring Assyrian Christians. Close to 800 were confirmed dead in Ermia, and another 2,000 had perished from disease. 200 Assyrians had been burned to death inside a church, and the Russians had discovered more than 700 bodies of massacre victims in the village of Hafdawan outside Ermia, mostly naked and mutilated, some with gunshot wounds, others decapitated, and still others carved to pieces. Other leading British and American newspapers corroborated these accounts of the Assyrian genocide. The New York Times reported on of October that 12,000 Persian Christians had died of massacre, hunger, or disease, thousands of girls as young as seven had been raped or forcibly converted to Islam, Christian villages had been destroyed, and three-fourths of these Christian villages were burned to the ground. The Times of London was perhaps the first widely respected publication to document the fact that 250,000 Assyrians and Chaldeans eventually died in the Ottoman genocide of Christians, a figure which many journalists and scholars have subsequently accepted. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Eyewitness accounts and quotes. Statement of German missionaries on Ermia. Topic: <inaudible> Recognition 
Assyrian historians attribute the limited recognition to the smaller number of Assyrian survivors, whose leader Mar Shimon 19 Benyamin was killed in 1918. For example, there are one million Armenians living in the United States alone, but even they were unable to persuade Congress to pass a United States resolution on Armenian genocide. In addition, the widespread massacres of all Ottoman Christians in Asia Minor is sometimes referred to by Armenian authors as an Armenian genocide. Topic. Timeline of recognition On April 24, 2001, Governor of the U.S. State of New York, George Pataki, proclaimed that, "...killings of civilians and food and water deprivation during forced marches across harsh, arid terrain proved successful for the perpetrators of genocide, who harbored a prejudice against Assyrian Christians." In December 2007, the International Association of Genocide Scholars, the world's leading genocide scholars organization, overwhelmingly passed a resolution officially recognizing the Assyrian genocide, along with the genocide against Ottoman Greeks. The vote in favor was 83%. The Interparliamentary Assembly on Orthodoxy IAO, passed a resolution officially recognizing the Assyrian genocide in June 2011. In April 2008, David Patterson, the governor of New York, recognized the genocide. On the 11th of March 2010, the genocide was officially recognized by the Riksdag of Sweden, alongside that of the Armenians and Pontic Greeks. In May 2013, the Assyrian genocide was recognized by the New South Wales State Parliament in Australia. In March 2015, Armenia became the second country to recognize the Assyrian Genocide in a declaration from the National Assembly which concurrently recognized the Greek Genocide. In April 2015, the parliaments of both Netherlands and Austria also recognized the Assyrian and Greek Genocides. On 2 June 2016, the German Bundestag recognized the genocides against the Armenian and Assyrian also referred to as Syriacs, Chaldeans or Aramaic-speaking Christians people. On 1 November 2016, the state of Indiana recognized the Assyrian Genocide under Governor Holcomb. On of February 2018, the Dutch Parliament recognized the Assyrian Genocide for the second time. In April 2018, the state of California recognized the Assyrian Genocide on the 103rd anniversary of the Genocide Remembrance under Assembly Joint Resolution No. 37. Monuments. There are monuments commemorating the victims of the Assyrian Genocide in France, Australia, Sweden, Armenia, Belgium, Greece and the United States. Sweden's government has pledged to pay for all the expenses of a future monument, after strong lobbying from the large Assyrian community there, led by Konstantin Sabo. There are three monuments in the U.S., one in Chicago, one in Colombia, and the newest in Los Angeles, California. In August 2010, a monument to the victims was built in Fairfield City in Australia, a local government area of Sydney where one in ten of the population is of Assyrian descent. Designed by Louis Batros, the statue is designed as a hand of a martyr draped in an Assyrian flag and stands at 4.5 meters tall. The memorial statue was proposed in August 2009. After conference with the community, Fairfield Council received more than 100 submissions for the memorial and two petitions. The proposal has been condemned by the Australian Turkish community. Turkey's Consul General to Sydney expressed resentment about the monument, while acknowledging that tragedies had occurred to Assyrians in the period as well as Turks. On 30 August 2010, 23 days after it was unveiled, the Australian monument was vandalised. The Genocide Monument in Sydney, Australia was vandalised again on 15 April 2016, with the words, F asterisk K Armenians, Assyrians and Jews, spray painted on the monument. Turkish perceptions There are different perceptions in Turkey regarding the Assyrian Genocide. The Armenian Turkish newspaper Agos has called the events the Assyrian Genocide. Turkish journalist Mehmet Alaka referred to the events as Seifo in his 2012 article in Radical and wrote that tens of thousands of Assyrians were murdered and expelled at the time. However, historian Bülent Ozdemir of the Balakazi University has pointed out to an Assyrian rebellion 
in Midyat in 1915, and said that the Ottoman Empire cannot be accused of committing a genocide against the Assyrians in any way, claiming that this was supported by documents in foreign archives. He claimed that the fabrication of such a genocide was part of an Assyrian identity building process. In 2007, Turkish Assyrian Mitra Hazel Somi classified the events not as a genocide, but as a massacre. Adrian Wolvart wrote that, Turks view Assyrian allegations as unfounded, unproven, and an attack on Turkish national identity, and that, Turks reject the Assyrian claims based on the stigma associated with the concept of genocide and their understanding of Turkish history. See also Armenian Genocide Armenian Genocide Denial Assyrian Independence Movement Greek Genocide Great Famine of Mount Lebanon List of Assyrian Settlements Newspaper Documentation of the Assyrian Genocide Stanley Savage Simul Massacre The Last Assyrians William Ambrose Shedd Yusuf Akbalat Topic Notes Topic Further reading Sebastien de Courtois 2004 The Forgotten Genocide Eastern Christians The Last Arameans Gorges Press LLC ISBN 1-59333-077-4. Gaunt, David, Bet Saoche, Jan 2006. Massacres, Resistance, Protectors, Muslim-Christian Relations in Eastern Anatolia during World War I Gorges Press LLC. ISBN 978-1-59333-301-0. Death's End, 1915, The General Massacres of Christians in Diyarbakir. In Armenian Tigranakert, Diyarbakir and Edessa, Urfa. Ed. Richard G. Hovanesian. UCLA Armenian History and Culture Series, Historic Armenian Cities and Provinces, 6. Costa Mesa, CA, Mazda Publishers, 2006 Hovanesian, Richard 2007. Kosarova, Anahit, ed. The Armenian Genocide, Cultural and Ethical Legacies. New Brunswick, New Jersey, Transaction Publishers. ISBN 978-1-4128-0619-0 Malek Yonan, Rosie The Crimson Field. Perlita Publishing. ISBN 0-9771873-4-9 Ramadan Sanyal, Salahi The Assyrians of Turkey, Victims of Major Power Policy. Turkish Historical Society Printing House. ISBN 9751612969. Stafford, Ronald Sempil, 2006. The Tragedy of the Assyrians. Gorges Press LLC. ISBN 1-59333-413-3. Shabazz, Yonan, 2006. The Rage of Islam: An Account of the Massacres of Christians by the Turks in Persia. Gorges Press LLC. ISBN 1-59333-411-7. Travis, Hannibal December 2006. Native Christians Massacred, the Ottoman Genocide of the Assyrians during World War I. Genocide Studies and Prevention, 1 3. doi, 10.3138, YV 544142P5RNX055. Archived from the original on 16 July 2012. Andrew, C., Semelin, J., Jensberger, S. 2010. Resisting Genocide, the Multiple Forms of Rescue. Columbia University Press. ISBN 978-0-231-70172-3. Ungor, Uger. 2005. Cup Rule in Diyarbakir Province, 1913-1923 PDF thesis. Archived from the original PDF on 21 March 2012. Wigram, W. A. 2002. The Assyrians and Their Neighbors. Gorges Press LLC. ISBN 1-931956-11-1. Claire Weibel Yacoub. Le Rêve Brisé des Assyro-Chaldanes. Editions du Cerf, Paris, 2011. 
Surma Lassiro Chaldean (1883–1975), Dans la Tormente de Mesopotamie. Editions Larmaton, Paris, 2007, translated into Arabic. Joseph Yacoub The Assyrian Question, Alpha Graphic, Chicago, republished with additional elements in 2003, translated into Arabic and Turkish. Joseph Yacoub Year of the Sword, The Assyrian Christian Genocide, A History, Hearst Publisher, London, August 2016. External links Safo Center, Assyrian Genocide Research Center Assyrian Holocaust, Religious Persecution and Ethnic Genocide of Assyrians in the Middle East